morning, everybody, and good morning to the update webinar of realfreight.com. Today uh, is the 11th of February, and we're going to update you on the situation in China due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. And it's a follow-up from the webinar last week. And last week we talked about the situation, uh, well, of course, last week, what's going on, what's missing, where is, are things going wrong. And now we're expecting a little bit of uh, an improvement in movement because some people have gone back to work. That would be the most significant change. Yeah, yesterday, it was 10th of February. That was the day that people, some people went back to work. Companies started uh, working again. So we're going to see how that influenced the logistics industry in China and Europe. We're having uh, one surprise guest with us, mm -hmm. Jie Lu Zhang. She's mm -hmm. from uh, GVT Logistics. Mm -hmm. And we're having Ari van Dijk, our Good colleague. Morning. Good morning. He will be moderating the questions. The questions, of course, are supposed to come from you, at the audience. And we encourage everybody to send in as many questions as possible. <coughs> you can do that via the live chat. And anything that we cannot deal with uh, will be dealt with afterwards. Now, there's two people you don't see. That is actually the same uh, concept as the, we did last week. There is uh, two people waiting for us in China. That's Jackie Yan, and he's from China International, sorry, China Trans International. And we have Marco Reichel, and he's from Crane Worldwide Logistics. We're going to call them via Skype. So we're welcoming everybody on board. Uh, I'd like to suggest that we call right away with uh, Marco. He uh, is ready to give us an update. So I'm going to make the Skype call now. Hi there, Marco. Hello, hi. Hi, how are you? Hey. I, I can see it's dark there. What time is it now in China? It is uh, 6 p.m., yes, um, <laughs> slightly dark. Just okay. got, got dark, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how's the situation uh, today? Um, yes, uh, well, everyone was prepared, everyone was um, prepared to go back to work on the 10th, um, as you said before just now. Um, situation actually looks more difficult and way different than we expect it to be. Most factories still um, closed down, most factories um, are not resumed to work or not allowed to, to uh, start working now. However, um, offices in Shanghai, for example, now um, are able to work, but they encourage the people to work from home, most of them. So um, it is still slowing. Um, we see that factories haven't been opened yet, uh, some have, um, but especially smaller factories are not allowed by the government yet. Okay, because when you're saying not allowed, it's by is it by the provinces not allowed or by the, the state? Yeah, so each, uh, every province has different regulations again, Bang, uh, yeah, back on this one, um, they do have regulations in place for smaller companies and also for big <clears throat> companies, so they have to take care of having enough masks there, uh, doing temperature checks outside the factories, um, having disinfection um, everywhere uh, supplied for the people who work there. And this is what most people currently also struggle here with. Um, they, After they have implemented all these um, security measures, they um, have to be checked by the authorities here in Shanghai or in, in China. And this definitely takes time. And um, that's why most of the companies still are applying for uh, being open um, but the government is, yeah, um, running running behind all the applications. Right. Time. I I just read some media reports and and there was also um, some media saying that the the government has encouraged all the provinces not to make it complicated. Is that correct? <laughs> Um, well, yes, not to make it complicated. Um, I think the whole situation is pretty complicated um, as far as we we have them here now. Um, since the factories are still shut down, they are not able to uh, produce anything. So we don't have any output from factories. Uh, right. But bigger factories also do start producing as well. Um, so I believe the government also or the authorities, they kind of like prioritize um, bigger, um, bigger factories, bigger companies 
companies because they employ much more manpower there. Right. And which companies uh, matter to the logistics industry? Well, all producing companies, um, I believe the backlash will come into into all Western markets uh, very soon once China cannot produce their um, their sourcing parts anymore. So um, let's say, for example, the U.S. market, the U.S. automotive market almost um, it sources 15 percent of the whole uh, car manufacturing parts from China, which definitely has an impact by now. And, and are those manufacturing, um, those factories of car parts, are those open now or still closed? Some are, some are not. Um, especially in the Hubei area, um, there is a lot of, um, for example, um, the, the biggest one, Bosch Automotive, they closed down two factories in, in Wuhan, as far as we know, um, which will impact for sure um, the, the global output on this right. one. What about yourself? Um, Have you gone back to work? Well, we have been back to work, but um, as the government um, really encouraged us to, to go back, work from home as far as we can, uh, we do have our operations team doing shifts by now um, to not have too many people going to the office or not have too many people within the office as well. Um, we do have security measurements in front of our offices as well uh, for temperature checks, uh, which definitely takes time for the people. They, they queue up. Um, here in Shanghai, um, you, you need to see that they work all in big buildings with many companies in there. Um, there is 10,000 people trying to get to work every morning into the same building almost. Right. And um, yeah, they queue up for temperature checks. They cannot, they cannot really um, be on time at this point. No. Right. Um, uh, last week we spoke about the, the trucking companies and those were actually the missing link or the most important link. Uh, did anything change regarding their possibilities to uh, to move? Um, unfortunately, also this uh, didn't change yet. Um, so after current information and the information really changed uh, changes hourly and daily here in in China. Different authorities have different um, different regulations. Means um, what we can currently do with trucking companies, they can just um, yeah, truck within or uh, um, yeah, drive within one province. Um, as soon as they cross provinces, they um, as soon as they return, they have to go into a quarantine again for 14 days. So um, most of the companies don't really uh, want to send them out to other provinces, which gives a big impact, huge impact also to Shanghai, because um, Shanghai, yes, we do have big manufacturing within Shanghai province. Um, but talking about Jiangsu, Zhejiang province, which is uh, directly next to us, they all utilize Shanghai uh, main as a port. Um, they, cannot, they cannot get their cargo out at this point. And is there some kind of solution possible where the, 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 the load is uh, handed over to another truck driver at the border of the province? Are, are those solutions there? So, this is solutions we are looking into, but um, it is very, very difficult at this time because um, the authorities also have different permissions, different um, applications you need to fill out. Um, drivers have to do health checks at this point, um, where it all comes a little bit messy. And since all province has different regulation, it's kind of like that no one has a real overview on what really to do. Yeah. Um, so what we are looking into is definitely, I'm, I'm quite sure uh, Jackie has the, the same information as he shared this morning on LinkedIn, a quite good overview on which province allows which driver into, uh, into which cities. Yeah. Um, it is kind of like a big mess um, for, for the rail especially. Um, of course, we cannot get into any terminals. Cargo from Shanghai, cargo from Suzhou, they need to, to go to Xi'an, to Chengdu, need to cross almost four provinces based on that one. To get a license, to get a truck driver um, running that up um, is at this point uh, not really feasible. So we are looking into domestic uh, rail options at this point. And, and what about the, the sea shipping uh, companies? Are they also facing similar problems with the trucking companies or is it different for them? I would say the, for ocean freight especially, I mean, they are, they are announcing certain black sailings, but we haven't heard back that there is a big back leash yet. Um, for air freight might be different, but for the ocean still the majority of the cargo is already at the port because um, it was back down um, before Chinese New Year dropped. Um, so they still pick up some cargo, but this will have definitely an impact very soon. Right. Um, there may be some questions from the audience, Ari. 
Well, first question, I, I heard uh, big impact for the ports and the supply chains, uh, the, the, the cargo will dry up. Uh, and what matter of time will the ports here in Europe be uh, affected by this? Uh, when will the ports in Europe be affected by the 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 large uh, well the, the 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 fact that they're not coming here or the fact that they're being stored in the the, no, that the cargo and the ships moving from China is going to uh, diminish. Right. Do you have any idea on that? When will we feel the um, on the ports affected in Europe or especially in um, also for the Trans-Pacific trade, we do not expect a huge impact for them as of now. Um, the blank sailing program of the carriers has been announced even before Chinese New Year. So this is kind of normal. Of course, it is um, that, that they have much more blank sailings as usual. Um, but in general, they, they shouldn't be have any infect, um, effect on the uh, destination ports. Right. Okay, yeah, there's a reaction here from Basha van Hauke, and he says the ports are already affected by it. But perhaps Basha could uh, elaborate a little bit on this uh, remark. Is it European ports or Chinese ports or both? Basha, we'd like to hear more from you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, maybe uh, you have some questions for him as well, because uh, you're working in uh, Tilburg, where you receive yes. the trains from Chengdu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are uh, still expecting the first train after the Chinese uh, Spring Festival to arrive in uh, Tilburg, but uh, we heard some rumors firstly from uh, Malaswitch that they're going to have extra inspection for all the cargoes that is uh, inbounding from China. So that already rises up the tension of our uh, concerns here in Europe, that whether my cargo is going to get influenced because the transit time of 15 days is what they uh, are buying for, but uh, right now if it's going to be longer, and also so this influence uh, is right after the spring festival. So we have this combined of reason of a delay. And uh, so that's the first uh, um, influence that I can think of. And another one is uh, also like uh, what uh, the guest has said, the manufacturing in China has been prolonged and uh, kind of post at this moment. Um, I have a client last week uh, who normally purchased from China. And uh, he called me by saying that, oh, I wanted to send out the uh, eastbound uh, container. So I asked him what you are transporting. He said, uh, I'm uh, transporting uh, one container of mask for my um, workers in China. So a full uh, 40 feet container, two ton of mask. I asked him, like, uh, are you sure you want to try by real? Because uh, that's going to be 15 days later that uh, the end destination is also in Jiangsu area. And I'm not 100% sure that my supplier trucking companies in China can even manage it. But he told me, yeah, the airline are uh, all being cut off, there is no other ways of uh, doing it. And so a lot of uh, factories in China are heavily relying on the musk to start reproducing the cargo that they can send to Europe at this right. moment. So I so would say, efficacious. yeah, there is no volume that can be put on the train for westbound and the eastbound. Um, if there is no train coming inbound into Europe and then we don't have wagons there to depart coming back to China. So it becomes a bad circle in a way. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, about the masks, uh, Marco, do you uh, see that companies are having shortages uh, on, on, in masks now that they've all resumed uh, to work and they all, they're all obliged to wear the masks? Uh, yes, yes. Whole, whole China, I believe, has currently shortages. Um, the majority and the priority of the masks are going um, directly from the factories to hospitals. Um, and as far as I know, even if we send out relief goods, so the government also blocks certain trucks for their relief um, relief goods, which definitely also back at the back end influences the truck deliveries for us okay. and uh, the truck de supply. Um, mass is a difficult topic at this moment. The government tries to control the to give out the mass to people. So, um, for example, here in our in our building in our building compound, we have to sign up um, with the management with the building management um, that we live here. We have to give them a. Um, um, our certificate, our, our residence permit, and then we get an appointment with the pharmacy, with a local pharmacy around here, um, to give us five masks per house, household at this time. Um, at this point, we are still waiting actually to, to get the information. I heard some people, they waited for five, six days to get masks even here. Okay. So you don't have one at the moment? 
Well, I have luckily some um, from from last year still because usually in China you wear masks also when you have high pollution grades. So <laughs> <laughs> for for us it's um, it's still okay. Uh, we also brought some back uh, when once we traveled like two weeks ago to Malaysia. We brought some some masks back, but um, of course we are also trying to to give them around to the people here um, as the situation gets gets even worse with the distribution of this of relief goods. Okay. Yeah, I've got a question here from Thomas Langowski. Mm -hmm. When will it be possible to pick up some cargo from Wuhan, Hawaii? Dubai? Perhaps. For, from Wuhan currently? Yes. No, there is um, currently no possibility. Even Hubei, um, Hubei province is almost impossible to, to pick up cargo unless uh, the government has something to say in that one. Yeah, I, I... Um, especially why is that? Because the truck driver from Hubei province um, are not allowed to enter into any city, into any province. So um, truck drivers from, from Wenzhou, from Hubei, from Wuhan, um, they are not allowed to, to go back to any other city. We see this even if the truck driver has an ID and the, the birth is um, in, or he's born in, in Wuhan, he's currently not allowed to drive into other provinces because they are checking IDs. Mm -hmm. I would like to add one more thing. I think it has uh, something to do with the characteristic of the logistics in China as well. It's heavily rely on manpower. And so when the manpower has been isolated in, at home, and then you don't have enough porters, drivers to do the uh, crosstalk in the warehouse. So even though that there are products uh, at stock in the warehouse, there is no way to bring it out. Unlike here, all the cargo is palletized in China. It's more in loose carton. So you really need a lot of workers. They come back from their hometown after vacation, and then they can start operating in, in logistics. Yeah. And I think that's one of the main issues that uh, uh, at least we are facing in the Chengdu area, because those workers are com coming from a smaller uh, towns uh, outside the Chengdu, the, the capital city of uh, Sichuan province, and uh, they couldn't reach the capital city uh, of Sichuan province. So in this way that even within the province that you see uh, lack of hands uh, in operation. And uh, um, when we look at the forwarding services uh, in China, most people can work from home, but it's not a habit of uh, uh, in China to work from home. Unlike here in the Netherlands, you can just have a token, you can log into your company account but in China, that is uh, something still new for all the forwarders. So uh, we also see a very delay of a reply. And uh, another case is uh, a delay in the cash flow uh, from uh, most of the bank in China. For example, I have clients who already sent a transfer to purchase a, a bunch of cargo, but uh, the company in China, ha uh, the shipper in China hasn't received this money because mm -hmm. the bank also has a delay. Mm -hmm. And so all these consequences piles up and we have uh, severe uh, consequences here. No. But what would your advice be then if you have cargo in one and you really need it? There's nothing you can do? And nothing. At this moment, I don't think uh, anyone even has an answer for that. I think Wuhan is uh, at a complete lockdown and the Hubei province at the second level of lockdown. And uh, like our guest said, that even you wanted to move in between the provinces, you have difficulties. And uh, the situation is severe because uh, Hubei province is located in the center of China. If I wanted to move uh, a, co a container from Shanghai or from Shenzhen, these uh, main ports to Chengdu area, I have to pass Hubei province in a way. And so this has uh, made the logistic in China, the operation, and also the forwarding uh, extremely difficult. Right. Okay, uh, we want to give some time to Jackie. So, uh, Mark, I would like to thank you very much uh, once again for your uh, thank update. Thank you very much, yes. And emphasize that questions could come in for you and we'll send them afterwards if that's okay with you. All right, for sure. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Yes, Jackie uh, is actually uh, providing us with the latest updates in train uh, traffic. There are some trains that left China and there are some trains going to China. And he has been uh, putting a, a lot of effort into finding all these trains and putting it in one file. He's doing that on a daily basis and he has some updates for us today as well. So let's give him a call. Hi there, Jackie. Hello, Marjorie. 
Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening to you. Hey, good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm, I'm doing I'm doing okay. Uh, still working from home. Um, we we cannot see you. Could you see if you can make yourself uh, visible? Okay. Yes, we can see you okay. now. Still working from home? Yep, but uh, I'll say uh, some some uh, some parts of our say, staff already I'll say uh, start working from uh, in the office uh, okay. this Monday. Okay, and uh, do you recognize what Marco was saying that uh, you all have to be checked before you enter the office? Is that same case for you? Yeah, the same case. Right, and how is that working out? Uh, first of all, I think you have to apply for the government permission to uh, say, resume work in the office. Uh, you have to submit a list of, uh, say, uh, documents and to prove that, uh, say, uh, uh, the staff hasn't been to, uh, say, uh, to Hubei province and hasn't been uh, in touch with any people from Hubei province. How do you and prove make sure that? You, uh, it's basically, I'll uh, say, it's an integrity issue. So uh, you have to make a statement that if you uh, ever lied to, to this and that you will be, I'll say, legally liable. So... This is a very serious issue. So everybody's, I'll uh, say, uh, say uh, stating the truth. So we wouldn't lie to this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and, and then, uh, what's the, yeah, please. You're you're based in Chengdu. Are are the, the rules? Yeah, I'm based there, in Chengdu. Yeah. And are the rules there any different from, for example, in Shanghai? Uh, I think uh, there is no big difference. So basically, overall, the rule is the same. So basically, uh, uh, for people that uh, uh, who are right now is uh, say who came from uh, for people who who working in Chengdu, if they travel to Chengdu uh, in uh, from outside of Chengdu for the most uh, for the recent fourteen days, and then they have to be I'll say quarantined for another fourteen days at uh, at Chengdu before they can go into office. Okay, how many how many of you uh, have made it to the office in this way? Uh, I think uh, a small percentage of people uh, made their way to the office and still that a large uh, proportion of people are still uh, can only work from home right. or current uh, status. Yeah. And, and what can you do at the moment? Uh, what can we do is that as I, as I'll say, keep I'll say, connecting uh, the information. Because as, as said by Marco, uh, actually the, the, the situation is a, bit, a little bit messy now uh, in different areas, uh, cities of China, because the local municipal government has also imposed the different uh, uh, regulations about also vehicle restriction or, or, or health check situation. So we have to also uh, connect all this. Uh, there's no one single source of this such information. We spend a lot of efforts to connect uh, and verify this information and uh, put it together to try to share it with uh, with the others who are in need, uh, so that we try to clarify the situation. And but still, that we managed to uh, to connect and pick up some containers and send it by train uh, already uh, this week okay. uh, and the last week, uh, end of last week. So mm -hmm. it it is it's very it's very very challenging, uh, but it's still doable. Which trains have you managed to uh, depart? We have managed to depart from uh, Hefei. Uh, uh, Hefei is, uh, is later this week. Uh, we, we managed uh, to send some uh, from Chongqing. Okay. And which uh, destinations did they have? Uh, they have Duisburg and Hamburg. Right. Okay. And, and that cargo, was it cargo that was already on the terminal or you actually managed to gather the cargo from other places? Uh, the cargo, uh, I think, uh, I believe that most of the cargo is from uh, already uh, arrived at the Chongqing before Chinese New Year. And uh, we got some cargo from the nearby city Chengdu. So we sent it by trucking. Right. So so how is the situation? Because you said there were some updates regarding the, the, the trucking business. There are some blockades on the road, as I understand yes, from you. Yes, indeed. What kind of block, blockades are those and why are they there? Uh, for the for the blocks on the way, because I say that uh, different uh, uh, cities have uh, imposed the different uh, say, uh, uh, restrictions, 
like uh, a certain uh, car, uh, like vehicles with uh, with car plates from uh, a certain provinces, like Hubei or or the uh, or the cities or the provinces that are how say most severely affected by the epidemic, uh, are not allowed to enter the city. So it, they restricted both the uh, the car plates and also uh, the driver itself uh, themselves. And which places are most affected? Which provinces are are blocked? Uh, as I'll say, as uh, this is uh, according to i say the health uh, uh, Bu uh, health uh, commission of China. So uh, on the top list are say the uh, the Hubei of course, and then uh, Guangdong province and uh, Zhejiang province. Jiangsu province, Hunan province, and Chongqing as well. So these are say a uh, and Henan province in the middle of China. So these are top uh, top six to seven uh, province. Uh, usually they are say a blocked from entering the 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 city for picking up the container. Right. I also saw a lot of cancellations of trains from Zhengzhou. Zhengzhou. Yep, uh, I, I personally talked to the how say, general manager of Jinzo platform company yesterday to verify the information. I think uh, he told me that the earliest date for Jinzo to resume service is the uh, beginning of March. And, and why, already, is mm -hmm. why yeah. do you think that is? Uh, I think uh, they received uh, say instruction from the local government as well you know, to suspend the service. Uh, how say to uh, to contain the the spread of the disease? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the the ultimate uh, how say the the number one I'll say a priority for them uh, right. for for the time being. Is that the only province after Hubei that actually restricted uh, rail freight traffic or suspended? Uh, uh, Hubei and Zhengzhou, as I said, that the suspended till uh, end of uh, February. Uh, um, I think uh, Changsha as well uh, also uh, announced that they already uh, announced the suspension of uh, the the train to Europe, even okay. before Chinese New Year. And I just uh, heard that they also suspended the train uh, to uh, to Belarus to Minsk as well because for lacking of cargo uh, and also for lacking I'll say for the for 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 this uh, disease. Okay. So if you look at the, the eastern region, which provinces are most likely to see train departures? If you're, if you're a shipper and you have to pick and choose a location for your cargo to be shipped, which provinces would you recommend? Uh, I would recommend Hefei and the Xi'an, uh, Xi'an uh, Railway. Right. And what about Chengdu, where you are? Uh, Chengdu, of course, uh, it's also recommendable as well. Uh, um, Yes, you're right. Chengdu is also recommendable. Okay. And a train departed yesterday to uh, this lady over <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, she said there are some rumors, rumors that there are also extra checks on the border. Do you know anything about this? Uh, yep, we've received a notification actually uh, from CDRS, the okay. platform company, mm -hmm. and it asked us to, also to sign a kind of uh, memorandum so we have to Accept the uh, tech. Accept the the risk of the cargo being scrutinized uh, for the like uh, scrutinized at the border of Malashevich. Okay. Uh, this is risk. Yeah. And and what would those risks be? Because it's only for safety, isn't it? Yes, it is only for the safety. Uh, I'll say, of of the I'll say the the health the health the health I'll say the safety of the goods. But is it is only. A risk of delay, mm -hmm. for example, is that what they mean? Yeah, there's a risk of delay. Uh, right. They could say that there's a possible, I'll say, a, a, a scrutinizing of this uh, realization of, of this cargo, but uh, this own, they say this is a possibility. Right. Okay. We're going to see how that works out for the train that's mm -hmm. on the way at the moment. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions We've for Jackie? A lot of questions. A lot of questions. Uh, I've got Daniel here. He's asking, is there an option for domestic rail cargo Moving from coast to hinterland hubs like Chengdu or Xi'an. Is there an option yeah, the, for domestic rail travel? Yeah, the domestic train is still, uh, say, is still working. Uh, uh, just uh, the the first mile and the uh, and the last mile pickup is, i uh, say, is uh, uh, very much pretty much restricted. Yeah, and you always need that. 
Yep, you always need that. Yeah. Okay, and I got another question from Thomas. He, uh, he remarks, it was mentioned about the solution with domestic rail transport, for example, Shanghai, uh, Suzu or Xi'an or Chengdu. Any more details about the solution, please? So a lot uh, more interest in the, in the solution uh, for domestic rail travel, I, I assume as a, a replacement of uh, trucking. Uh, yeah, actually, um, it is it is quite a good, a viable say, alternative solution. Even before this uh, has happened, we use a lot of domestic train, uh, block train, like from, we organize also some block trains, like from Shanghai area to Zen, to Chengdu, to connect with the train from Chengdu to Tierberg, uh, for example. So to actually to save some, uh, to cut some cost for the precarriage part. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll give you one example, the train from Chen, uh, Shanghai to Chengdu, uh, it is a fixed uh, schedule block train, mm -hmm. three times per week on each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. The transit time is only three days. Okay, so that helps a little bit, but you still need the trucks. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yep. And I, I also but, uh, think uh, that... Uh, it's easier, it's easier uh, sorry, it's just, but it's easier to find, how say, the trucks for say for some short haul uh, transportation than long haul, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I also think that uh, from uh, China Railway, the regulation of uh, allowing departure of a train needs to be changed according to the situation because uh, since the beginning of this year that we received this notification that if the train is not uh, fully booked uh, and then it cannot depart from Chengdu to Tilburg. And for eastbound, uh, its uh, volume is uh, requested to be more than half. Yeah. But uh, uh, during the special cases of a coronavirus and uh, we see a lack of uh, uh, cargo already and if the um, restriction on the volume is still there and then we will see less and less cargo as a bad influence and uh, so I hope that uh, the um, politicians and government would recognize this issue and uh, start uh, from the policy level. Yeah. Is there any movement there that you know of, uh, Jackie? Are there any uh, politicians thinking about changing this uh, restriction on uh, fully loaded trains? I don't think so. Uh, we still have the same regulation. For example, for the westbound train, the minimum, I would say, loading ratio should be 90% full of the train. Uh, otherwise, you cannot, I would say, depart the train. Yeah. Uh, the regulation is still the same. Right. Mm -hmm. So if any official is uh, listening to our webinar, this is a very good idea, maybe. Um, yeah, also some remarks about the freight prices. How are they developing? because uh, somebody says it has gone up 600 percent. Mm -hmm. I mean, does anybody know anything about that? I would say the price uh, is a bit different uh, this year compared to last year because of the way of uh, giving the subsidy. So in the past, that uh, the subsidy has been put on the what uh, at least on the CDRS train is uh, called uh, Rongo Plus. So if you are using the Chengdu train to connect the coastline and for this on carriage or pre carriage uh, domestic transport, then you can receive amount of uh, subsidy. But uh, since the beginning of this year, this amount of uh, subsidy has been moved directly on the train. So the terminal-to-terminal -terminal price actually reduced, but in total, the door-to-door -door cost you see around the 300-400 increase. But uh, that's a general trend, I, I believe, for this uh, uh, initiative of uh, having you know, China-Europe trains. We'll see less and less subsidy being used on the train, and uh, the uh, type of cargo that has been selected to be transported along the way will be uh, really uh, specified in the okay. future. Mm -hmm. Right. Any any uh, price changes are notable uh, as a di direct result of the situation, uh, Jackie? Uh, no, I think I don't think that prices has been affected by this so say uh, epi epidemic situation. Uh, mm -hmm. I agree with Jack Lu that the trend is that I'll say uh, the government is going to I'll say uh, 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 reduce the, the subsidy on uh, on this uh, product, so it could be more and more say market driven product in the future. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Daniel asks, is there any communication between, between the cargo shipping community and government representatives? Did you get that? Uh, from my side, that uh, since the uh, beginning of Spring Festival, that we have requested, uh, we have received requests from the municipality of Chengdu and also the provincial uh, from Sichuan, that uh, the 
um, that we as uh, their partner company in the Netherlands uh, should help to look for the sources of uh, masks and uh, all the medical supplies. Mm -hmm. And so I think at this moment that uh, fighting against uh, coronavirus is still on their top uh, issue. They are trying to uh, utilize all their resources and connections uh, for that purposes. And so um, there hasn't been that much attention uh, on the actual real trade or the trade. Uh, but I have to say that uh, um, the impact is uh, coming from the confidence uh, of the shipper and consignee, most likely, um, because if uh, there is no strong support from the government on this product, uh, which everybody knows this is a very um, politically uh, directed products in the market, and then the shipper consignee will lose their conf confidence of using this uh, real transport. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Do you see already uh, interest fading in real freight? Or is it the opposite? Um, I've I, I've heard some uh, negative comments uh, um, from the Dutch side mostly um, by saying that uh, um, it is a little bit dangerous of a uh, trading with China. It has mm -hmm. been the the discussion has been upgraded in a level that the trading with China first you meet the regulation and now you you have all these uh, cases uh, which I. Personally, think this is a really a, a accident incident. Mm. That is not a regular case, but uh, there has been a discussion of uh, of that. Yeah, and, and Igor remarks uh, a lot of uh, LCL rule requests are coming in from the air and sea side. So perhaps people are looking for different ways to mm -hmm. ship their cargo, and then especially looking to real now. Yeah. Mm. So real is actually the solution, but uh, this is the the negative uh, responses towards China more than to real. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And Hans is saying, hello, you are mainly talking about real. How is the situation mm -hmm. in Xinjiang? Xinjiang. Oh, Tianjin. Yeah, Xing, Xingang port area. I, I believe yeah. that the situation is more or less the same, that uh, the effects on the whole logistic is uh, uh, well connected, and uh, yeah. Tianjin and Shanghai, and also from uh, Shenzhen, those areas, and Ningbo port, they are having the similar influences. If I ask both of you, uh, we asked the same question last week, but maybe your answer is different now. Which modality yeah. is most affected? Would that be real sea or air freight? What would you say? De definitely, I think air freight is most uh, affected uh, modality because, uh, as you can see, that uh, so many flights has been already cancelled. There is no way to fly out. And I heard from my uh, counterparts in Europe that uh, he he told me yesterday. And the air freight rates from main ports of Europe to China has already risen uh, like six to ten times of uh, more expensive. Right. Like now that the, the market rate is about uh, six euro per kg uh, air freight from uh, Europe to China. And it, it used to be just one euro. Wow. Do you agree? Is, is that yeah, most I, I also think that it's uh, most likely to affect uh, air freight first, and uh, that's also one of the reasons we receive a lot of requests uh, of uh, LCL consolidating cargo, smaller yeah. volume the cargo moved from air to uh, real at this moment. Yeah. Mm. So it may eventually be a blessing for real freight, if you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, are there any more questions, Ari, from the audience? Uh, well, somebody's remarking, do you guys already consider not attending transport logistics in Shanghai in June? That's an exa yeah, exhibition. Th mm -hmm. There are similar questions about exhibitions in uh, Russia. And let me see, we heard back from uh, Basha, and, uh, he was talking about the ports mm -hmm. beginning. Blank sailings affect both European and Chinese ports. Some ships are not arrived as projected. Cargo delayed until further notice due to quarantine measures. Mm. Can we expect the operators to increase the number of departures of train as soon as the crisis is stabilized and production is back up and running? Well, that is one for Jackie, because I know that uh, there were some efforts to uh, increase the departures. Have you succeeded so far? Sorry, can you, can you say the question again? Yes, there were some uh, questions about the departures. Are there any chances of increasing the number of departures? Yes, uh, there's a possibility. I'll say we already, I'll say we, with the expectation of, I'll say, uh, some volume being uh, switched from air freight and ocean freight to rail, 
we already are say pre uh, pre booked some blockchains to cope with this situation. Right. So we have the possibility to increase the the capacity of train. Yes. So real freight is ready. The trains are ready. There's extra trains. Now we just need to get it onto the trains. That's yes. the the challenge. Okay. Yep. Then um, I suggest we thank you very much again. Um, so we're going to uh, publish your. Uh, updated schedule on our website as well i thank you very much mm -hmm. for uh, putting that together and uh, mm -hmm. let's stay in touch and i will also jose put together a a, a summary of jose road restriction uh and i send it to you so maybe feel free to share with the audience as well okay. i hope that this uh, uh, help or clarify the situation a little bit okay thank you very much for all your efforts and good luck thank you okay yeah bye 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 yeah, bye bye. Bye. Now, do you have a little bit of confidence in the train arriving in Tilburg? Um, yes and uh, no, because <laughs> at this mo at this moment, I think the whole Chinese uh, society has been waiting for the turning point, uh, um, because the numbers of uh, uh, being diagnosed and uh, suspected uh, uh, has increasing every day of uh, over 5,000 and uh, uh, we saw some kind of a sign uh, on the numbers uh, indicating that uh, um, the there is a control or there is a positive influence of uh, uh, all the cities being locked down and hope, hopefully um, this number would give us more confidence. Um, first, yeah. we have to uh, maintain calm and also uh, really stay uh, isolated at home in China and then uh, maybe at a later stage it will help to recover of the whole situation and uh, that would benefit the real freight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when you said uh, when there was the the SARS virus, it was mm -hmm. a little bit of a similar situation. Yeah. Do you remember how long it took before that turning six point? Months. Uh, six I months. I saw. Yeah, I okay. saw the first case yeah. of uh, uh, SARS until the last uh, case of uh, the the patients being uh, released uh, from the hospital. Mm -hmm. It's been six months in total, and uh, this time the number of uh, um, deaths has already passed the SARS, and also mm -hmm. the range of uh, patients and uh, the territory of this disease has uh, exited the uh, SARS already and um, yeah but uh, um, yeah we keep our finger crossed and uh, yeah. keep our was, hopes on. Was the impact similar to uh, back then? The impact on the logistics industry? Do you see the, the same kind of development? Um, in the past it was mainly in the Beijing area and the mm -hmm. Guangzhou area but this time it started uh, right in the center of China so um, you see the patterns of uh, spreading out especially that was bef before Spring Festival the times that all the Chinese are migrating from mm -hmm. one place to another mm -hmm. so that has also um, kind of uh, bringing this uh, whole um, thing into a different level yeah. so yeah right. but it's uh, definitely comparable yeah okay Ari any last questions well uh, some more questions about trade fairs and uh, I believe in March in Shanghai intermodal Asia is taking place and Dorota is asking uh, will that continue to take place or will it be yeah. cancelled I don't think I, we know it at this we point. don't know it yeah no. we have to there were some uh, similar questions I, I suggest that we ask the organizer or you ask the organizer we as ProMedia, we can say we're going to be there in Poznan on uh, 11, 12 and 13 uh, for the Real Freight Summit. Yeah, that's in, in Poland, yeah. in May, sorry. So that is not cancelled so far, but that's in Poland, that's not in China. So if there is no, uh, more, questions. no more questions, well, I'd like to thank you uh, very much, Jelu, for uh, joining us. No, glad to be here. And uh, thank you, Jackie, and thank you, Marco. And of course, thank you again, uh, audience, and all the questions that came in. We see the, the topic is uh, very um, much alive, and we...